Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. December 19th, 2017. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. It is the Savage Nation. Anything but politics today. Well, almost anything but politics. There is so much propaganda out there about the benefits of uh, the corporations repatriating offshore profits that I'm going to talk about that just briefly. Because the big corporations are the big winners of the new Goldman Sachs tax plan that was just proposed by Mr. Mnuchin. And, of course, Pfizer, Merck, Hewlett-Packard will definitely do very well. Indeed, so will Google, so will Verizon. And you're thinking, wow, boy, the new tax plan says they can bring back all their overseas profits at a low taxation, a one-time tax holiday, and the economy is going to benefit. You're going to get a better job. Your children will get new braces. Your wife will get new shoes. I'll give you a little truth on that in a few minutes, and you can judge for yourself when I give you the history of when this, this was done before. So you could listen to all the Margos in the, in the radio business who tell you it's the greatest thing in the world and it's going to boost the economy. It's actually going to boost the corporations, which unto itself is not a bad thing, but it's not going to benefit you at one iota, so far as I can tell. I'm also going to talk about marijuana horror stories because many of you are mistakenly thinking that marijuana is natural. It's an herb like tea or coffee, and it's good for you because it's grown on the earth. Well, that shows the absolute abject ignorance of people who think that because it's natural, it's good for you. I can list at least 50 plants that are natural that can kill you. But I won't bother with that. I'll just tell you that marijuana is toxic for many individuals. For stupid people, marijuana is probably beneficial. For idiots who have the brains uh, are the equivalent of a one-string banjo, marijuana might resonate a little bit on that one-string banjo. But for those people who are blessed with great minds, or even averagely good minds, marijuana is one of the most destructive substances you can ingest into your body. That's why it used to be called dope, because it makes you into such. And I'm going to ask you about marijuana horror stories. Many of you have been conned into thinking that you should eat a brownie with a marijuana this, or marijuana, and you've wound up in, in emergency rooms. Ask the doctors of what's going on. I'll also explain to you the difference between marijuana, meaning cannabis sativa, cannabis indica, and you'll come to understand the danger you may be putting yourself in. Then I'm going to talk about a Johns Hopkins psychiatrist who says transgender is a mental disorder and sex change is biologically impossible. And... He's the real McCoy. He's the former psychiatrist-in-chief of Johns Hopkins. He is the current Distinguished Service Professor of Psychiatry. Psychiatry. I'm sure he will be attacked roundly by the PC crowd to lead you to believe that transgenderism is normal. Well, he's confirming what all of us know to be true. Transgender is a mental disorder and sex change is biologically impossible. Thank you, Dr. McHugh, for trying to bring common sense and science into an impossibly difficult subject. And then I'm going to talk about this. Are you a housekeeper or a valet to the rich? I saw in the uh, newspaper this morning that a prominent Upper East Side, that's New York, not everyone knows what East Side means, a prominent Upper East Side New York City couple is looking for two people to cook, clean, and run errands for them for $150,000 for the two of them and to oversee cooking, cleaning, child care, and construction in their second home. The prominent Upper East Side couple is looking for a team of two workers to act as gatekeepers to the principals, ensuring all aspects of the home are adequately operating at all times. And I'm going to read to you the full job description below. 
I personally, when I was poor, wouldn't have taken a job like this for a million dollars a year. you got to be insane to take a job like this. But I'm going to ask you, are you a housekeeper or a valet to the rich? you have any confessions to make of, without names now, I don't want the names. How about confessions of housekeepers and valets to the rich? How's that one? Managing and providing full-time care of the family's residents. Okay. Museum quality cleaning throughout the home. Uh, don't tell that to housekeepers I know. They don't, they've never been in the museum, so how can they give you museum quality cleaning? With attention to bedrooms, special surfaces, and bathrooms. Okay. Full laundry duties, washing, ironing, steaming, closet organization, managing garments. Well, you know, the, this couple sounds like they're trying to rip someone off because usually if you hire a house manager, they don't also do laundry. Preparing fresh and healthy breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Adhering to all dietary restrictions and requests. That should be an insane asylum right there. This one's vegan. That one's vegan. That one's schmegan. That one's a meat eater. That one's an anti-meat eater. That one eats monkey flesh. But usually rich people don't make you cook if you're going to also clean and do the laundry. They have a, a chef. So this is a ripoff. Formal service and meal prep for, upon request for luncheons, dinner parties, including table setup, floral arrangements, bartending, wine pouring and pairing, and guest greeting and socialization. How can anyone know how to do all of that? Wait, it gets. They also want you to do personal shopping, running errands, stock procurement, and special requests, whatever that may mean. Heavy organizations throughout the home, including pantries, kitchen, closets, ability to work in tandem and oversee vendors, contractors, and additional domestic staff. Knowledge and ability to operate smart home systems, Lutron, Crestron, Kaleidoscope. Oh, don't get me started with Crestron. Driving the principles as requested to and from appointments, errands, meetings, any and all other duties or requests related to the needs of the principles of the household. I don't know what the hours are. I don't see how you can do all these jobs, but they're offering $150,000 salary for two people to live in with them, a so-called domestic couple, to do all of these things for $150,000 for the two people. So I will ask you, are you a um, housekeeper or a valet to the wealthy? Any horror stories? I will ask you about medical marijuana horror stories as well. I think that's interesting. And if that's not enough for you, I will also describe to you why the GOP tax plan to repatriate offshore profits may be the greatest scam ever foisted upon the conservative radio audience who has absolutely no ability to distinguish between one thing and another. In fact, if you were told that Donald Trump was to institute a Marxist plan, you would say it's a good plan because you heard it was a good plan from people who want something from Donald Trump. Well, I'd rather look at the reality of it rather than the falsehoods of what you may think are the reality. The realities. Pardon me, I just ate a date. I shouldn't have. I'm not from the Middle East. Once in a while I eat a date and have a cup of coffee, which you're going to have now. And the phone number is 855-407-282. 855-400-SAVAGE. You should get the newsletter. It's free from michaelsavage.com. Two, three times a week it arrives in your inbox with an interesting story, tale, picture of Teddy, picture of me. I don't know, whatever. And it'll be fun for you. Just go on michaelsavage.com to do that. Anthony wants to kick off the ball today on the on the show. I'm actually feeling quite good because I feel holiday-ish. I'm sitting here at my broadcast desk somewhere in the environs of San Francisco. And again, on my desk, I have a little model car about six inches, four inches long, of a Volkswagen six-window hippie bus with peace and love signs written on it and a surfboard on the roof. And I keep these models to remind me that life can be much simpler and was much simpler and should be much simpler and that I don't have to agonize every second of the day over world affairs, even though I've been doing so since I'm five years old. In fact, when the elders of the crowd used to meet and talk about the boys, that's how it was done in those days, they'd all get together, all the men, in that little uh, Bronx apartment building, and the boys would hang around. We'd be out in the street playing what at playing. The men I know would talk about the boys. This one he thinks would be a good at that. That one will be good at that. They were always talking with each other about what their sons would be good at. They all looked at me and they said, I think he's the kind of kid who would be a good lawyer. Oh, God, was I never going to be a good lawyer. No, I don't put down lawyers. I, I think that most people know what I think of lawyers. I think they use the wisdom of the ages and the wisdom of the law to screw people. And so it's something I never wanted to go in. 
Moreover, uh, professions like that require memory, 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 and trickery, 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 trickery. I'm more of a right brain creative person, even though I can do left brain quite well. So, no, that's not what I wanted to be. No one knew what a talk show host was or a writer and never heard of it. So the elders of the tribe couldn't say, hey, that little Michael would be a good writer. Little did they know. Or that little Michael would be a good uh, broadcaster. They didn't know what that was. Not in that circle. They were all immigrants, by and large. So here we are so many years later, so many administrations later, so many days later, so many months later, so many years later, and life goes on. And that's what we're going to talk about in these topics again. I open the lines up uh, to all of these topics, 855-407-282. We're talking about repatriating, if you want to do politics. The GOP tax plan to repatriate offshore profits is a scam. Just a scam, a complete scam. And there is a historical example from this. The experience from the 2004 tax holiday, I'll just cut to the chase, suggests that most of this money will be distributed to shareholders not invested in U.S. business assets, says Edward Klenbar, Kleinbar, professor at the University of Southern California's Gould School of Law. This was done. A one-time tax holiday on overseas profits generated little economic oomph 13 years ago. The 2004 American Jobs Creation Act temporarily cut taxes on repatriated profits to 5.25% from 35%. About 9,700 companies took advantage of the tax break, and they brought back $312 billion, right? And what happened? Well, unfortunately, the tax holiday did not increase domestic investment or employment, according to a 2011 Congressional Research Service report. So you can believe what you want to believe. You can believe all of the profits, false profits, real profits, con men that you want. Let's wait and see, but I'm not so sure this is going to benefit us. Also, uh, marijuana horror stories, especially those of you who have been hook, hook, hookered, yeah, hookered, hooked into thinking that you should try a chewy, a medical marijuana chewy and wound up in an emergency room half out of your mind because you were sold a bill of goods. And again, we're talking about the housekeeper story. A housekeeping couple that would do all those things for 150000 a year. You are virtual slaves. And by the way, what are the hours of a job like that? Do they have any hours? I really wonder, do they have any hours? This is the Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. It is the Savage Nation. I shouldn't have asked for this song because my mind is going to want to tell you New York childhood stories and you're not going to want to hear them. No, Mike, tell us that, Doc, please. What we want to hear is about your childhood. We hate the country. We hate life today. There's no life left. Please tell us your... Nah, I don't want to talk about Come Softly to Me. I just think of a 1959 Chevy with a wheel owned by a guy who became a famous rock and roll star. Then he became a nothing. I don't know seventh grade so um i uh, i did something on the twitter thing i said savage poll on trump's first year is in he rates an a minus according to big polling sample and i put it on michaelsavage.com so somebody writes no thanks to you savage ever since he became the president you're critical of him i hope you come to your sense soon and support him again so i wrote if you want a false talker there are plenty of choices especially those who supported anyone but trump while i was behind them for over a year then Drew Mackle writes, polling sample completely made up of conspiracy theorists, far-right, conservative, evangelical, Christian Republicans, I'd say. So I answered him, and I said, as stated by a far-left, anti-American, Marxist, anti-God, Christian-hating, de destructionist. New word, destructionist. You'll hear it stolen within uh, minutes. So he answers me, he says, you're funny. I'm not a Marxist, extreme left, or anti-American, but most, mostly definitely anti-Trump and not a fan of organized religion in general. Let me tell you, it's an honor to be anger tweeted by you, Dr. Savage, in a deep voice. Thanks, Drew. I'm glad you like being honor tweeted. I never heard of anger tweeted. I'm learning new things every day. 
And then I get attacked by those who listen to talk shows by people who don't know the first thing about business. And I said, if the past is an example, the last time this benefit was granted, corporations invested very little in new factories and jobs. What do you want me to do? Tell you that it didn't happen and it's going to change? So, okay, what can I say to you? I put it up there and I got answers and you got your answers. Now we'll take some callers on all the topics that we are talking about. And I'm having a good time today. Medical marijuana horror stories. Would you take that job for 150000 a year? Repatriation of corporate dollars. What will actually happen? WABC, Anthony, let's do it 30 seconds or less. Go ahead, Anthony. Thank you, doctor. Um, I, I have a lot of health conditions and uh, was taking opiates, and they decided to try me on medical marijuana. It's been the worst thing I ever did in my life. I... Um, uh, it's like being in a stupor, and they're telling me that, uh, well... Well, the next thing you know, you think Hillary Clinton won the election. Yeah, that's all I need. Yeah, like I'm skiing with Harry Truman. But <laughs> thing you know, no, no, keep keep uh, ingesting uh, chewies of medical marijuana, and the next thing you know, you'll be chanting with Antifa and believing UFOs exist. Not only that, it, 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 it's... I'm sending you a copy of God, Faith, and Reason, okay? Stick to the basics. It's gotten mankind through the planet for the last 5,000 years. I think it'll work for another few a few months. You know what I mean? We don't have to throw everything out in the garbage. 30 seconds or less, next one. Next one, next one, next one. Anthony didn't like it. K. No, I don't know. His medical card enables... Them. Madeline on KSFO Line 9, what's on your mind? Oh, hi there. I'm so glad that you took my call. I am speaking from my car because, unfortunately, I'm homeless. And I know how you feel about the homeless people, but this is in regards to a very, very brutal divorce. And if it weren't for uh, uh, on 4-20-2013, my ability to obtain a medical cannabis card, I can't begin to tell you that I don't think that I would be here today. Well, I'm glad to hear it. I'm he I am glad to hear that it has worked for you, but I will repeat my main point. Medical marijuana is one of the greatest scams ever foisted upon humankind. Marijuana is one of the most dangerous of all drugs, and many people are extremely destructively reactive to it. You may not be one of them, Madeline, but I'm sending you a Christmas gift of God, faith, and reason. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. What a voice, huh? My the platter. I love it. Still moves me. It's a beautiful song. Geometry, crew cut, Jamaica High School, dozing off in class, staring at ponytails. Welcome back to the program. It is. It is an amazing thing to watch the world go round like a merry-go-round. Only four shopping days left to purchase God, Faith, and Reason for Christmas. So get your butt down to a bookstore. Let's go to some of the callers. Glenn on WABC. Is anyone else out there happy? Or my, Why do I feel giddy today? Could be the date that I just had and the coffee. I know that's an ambiguous statement. It's a non-binary statement. I just had a great date and a, co <laughs> and a cup of coffee. Glenn on WABC, welcome to the program. Go ahead, Glenn. What's up? I'm calling because uh, with the transgender issue, and I'll, and I'll mention to you that I am extremely heterosexual. I'm sorry to hear it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's <laughs> the problem. Uh, but anyway, my son is transgender. He's, his gender identity is non-binary. I don't know if you know what that is. It was something new for me to have to learn. So it's a, a, an individual, as I know it, who does not identify as a male or a female. Is that what, what you say? Yes, yes. Um, so, oh, hold on, I'm not going to ridicule you or your son, but I just want to go back to Dr. Paul McHugh, who's the former psychiatrist and chief of Johns Hopkins, who said that transgender is a mental disorder and sex change is biologically impossible. What does this mean then? You know... I really don't know if it's a, just a mental disorder or, or if it's not. I don't really think anybody knows. Um, he, well, let me, Glenn, Glenn, how old is your child? Uh, he is 21 now. 
in his childhood, did he ever was he ever attracted to boys or girls? Um, he he is attracted to boys now, so I guess he could also be classified as gay because he is male. But when okay, so let's say when he was younger, was he attracted to girls? Um, you know, it was hard to say. We always had a little inkling that there might be something a little bit strange, but. I know I see, I've seen him, he was kissing girls when he was a little boy, maybe like second or third grade. So what do you think but, steered him into, what steered him in this direction? Well, he says that his earliest, like, memories when he was maybe like 10 or 11, um, he said he, at that point, he started being attracted to boys. He started having more um, of an attraction to boys than girls, but he also says he didn't feel like a boy. Um, you know, we did you wait, hold it? Did you tell him it was right or wrong those feelings? Did you tell him? Well, wait a minute. Now you're a boy, and you should you should not wait. Just well, hold on. When he started to say that to you, did you say, "Look, Johnny, I understand what you think you're feeling, but you're a boy, and you should be attracted to girls." Did you ever try that? Well, I didn't know about this until he was about eighteen or nineteen. Um, so and what you're saying is whatever never, you'll accept him as he is, and I understand that. That's what a parent should do. But there, I think there's a point at which you can steer a child into a sexual format or a sexual identity. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I, I you know, I wish you were right. To be honest with you, uh, I never tried to steer him in one way or another. He has cried in my arms, and he said, "Dad, why can't I just be like you?" Cause it's uh, okay, that's very... T look, it's very touching, and I'm not going to say like a, a stupid idiot and say, you know, you should have done this and you should have done that. What it is is just accept him as a gay boy. I understand that. But I am quoting an article from a doctor who's really up there who said that transgender is a mental disorder. It could be. And, really and Wait a minute. Hold on. It doesn't mean that you should cr you should hurt the, tra the mentally disordered person. Right. I agree with you totally. It doesn't mean you should hurt them or yell at them. But on the other hand, the media is doing children no favor by treating the confusion of so many people as perfectly normal. Maybe these children need treatment and prevention. You know what? I think if there was something that they could find... You, you sound like an extremely kind person, by the way, and very understanding. I, I'll tell you that, okay. speaking with you. I, I, mean, I mean, I would normally think that a father would get defensive and tell me to go to hell, frankly, for even taking this position. But you're an extremely nice person, Glenn. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. It, look, it was very difficult for me to accept. Um, but he's a wonderful kid. I'm sure he is. Yeah, and I just, you know, want the best for him. I worry all the time. <laughs> well, you, I, I mu must say that the the uh, distinguished service professor of psychiatry who made this statement, saying that transgenderism is a mental disorder that merits treatment, and that sex change is biologically impossible, and that people who promote sexual reassignment surgery are collaborating with and promoting a mental disorder, he is somebody to consider as well in making these decisions. And I am not here to tell you what decision to make. All I will say is that many of the children who fall into this category wind up doing very bad things to themselves in time, and you can only blame that on on who? On the people who don't accept them? That's easy to do. So you got to be very you got to be very careful in what you support and what you don't support. So you know, Glenn, there's no easy answer to this. Everyone's children are sacred to them, especially thoughtful pe people. They don't try to beat something out of somebody or beat something into somebody. I mean, that's a, a fact of reality. And if I had had a child who was that way, I probably would have done what you did, which is accept him 100%. But I didn't. You know what I'm saying? I didn't. I would have, though. I would have accepted the child just as you do. So, uh, I mean, God bless you. I'm sending you God, faith, and reason. Maybe it'll give you something interesting to look at. But why does God do this to us? If there is a God in heaven, why would he make children suffer like this with gender with gender, gender confusion of this level? What is it? Is it the uh, gestation period during which time uh, the mother was exposed to chemicals? Is it inherently in the nature of the child? Is it nature versus nurture? 
Are we even allowed to discuss this anymore without being called Nazis or fascists? Dr. McHugh said that studies show between 70% and 80% of children who express transgender feelings spontaneously lose those feelings over time. And for those who had sexual reassignment surgery, most said they were satisfied with the operation, quote, but their subsequent psychosocial adjustments were no better than those who didn't have the surgery. Don't think it's a, it's a cakewalk. You know, you got a 60-year-old man who suddenly decides he wants to wear a dress and high heels and cut his schmendrick off and he's going to be happy now. I mean, the world's 50% women. He wants to be one of them. Ask the women. Ask the 50% of the planet if they're happy every minute. Where does he get the idea that if he becomes the woman within, he's going to be a happy person? How does that even enter his mind other than through brainwashing? By logic, he should understand that there's no road through life that's a guarantee. That's number one. You want Doc Savage to give you a little advice? Give me a room of 20 people in this position, and I'll sit down and talk to them. And here's what I'd say. Okay, here's what it is. I'm not here to judge you. But here's what's happening. Don't assume that if you feel as a woman within and you become a woman at age 40, 50, 60, you're going to live in nirvana because you're not. You're going to be the same person, only this time you're going to be taking hormone shots the rest of your life. And you're going to look in the mirror and you're going to look like an ugly woman. So you think very carefully. If you're gay, you're gay, but stop already with, with twisting your body around. And I've said for years the doctors who do this are the ones who are causing the harm. They're doing it for profit, not to help anybody. That's not to say that if a person has feelings toward the same sex, that is something that should be condemned. I'm not going to condemn it because I don't have those problems. I don't know what it's like to have that problem every second of your life and have to make a decision in that regard. There is a third, there's a third way also. The third way is don't have sex at all. Where is it written? Tell me where it's written you're supposed to have sex every minute like a mink in heat. Where? Where did that come from? If you have gender dysphoria, can't you make the third choice of not having sex at all? Become celibate? Where did that get lost in the shuffle? Millions of priests through time have been um, celibate. It hasn't killed them. Now, don't make this the bad joke that, you know, they molest boys. That's about 3% of the priesthood. So let's not generalize. That's overgeneralizing, you know, and, and that's a danger to everybody. But you can become celibate. You won't die. Or if you want to be a hedonist, that's your decision. Many people have decided hedonism is the right road of life. Some want to be Epicureans. Some want to be hedonists. They, they follow hedonism or Epicureanism. There are many ways through life. Others practice a form of Puritanism. They um, don't enjoy food. They don't enjoy drink. They don't enjoy sex. They enjoy nothing but pain. Uh, they would be called Republicans. I'm joking. No, that, that's what the liberals would think. Okay, so I didn't really want to get into this whole thing. I, I just thought it would come up. I mean... Uh, what does God think about this whole subject? I wonder. Well, I'll give you an answer from one man's opinion since it popped up on my radio show. God, I'm going to talk to God now. Imagine a conversation with God about transgenderism. God, why did you make people like this if the, thing, if the world you create is perfect? Why? God's answer is, that's for them to figure out. I mean, what, are they being pu punished for some reason? I don't know the answer. All right, so look, we're going to go back to the other stuff we can have some control over, the medical marijuana um, nonsense. This is not to say that components of cannabis sativa are not medically active and useful. They are. However, most of the industry, of the medical marijuana industry, is given over to getting high, only, only getting high, under the guise of performing some kind of medical service. It's not true, just not true. And if you find a component of the marijuana plant that is conducive towards your health, then try to find an isolate of the cannabis plant that contains that alkaloid and leave out the psychoactive components because they're not necessarily good for you. And we'll talk about that at another time. I have a background in, in chemistry, phytochemistry, plant chemistry medicinal plants i spent years studying these things it doesn't make me the world's expert but i know a lot about it and i also know about all the people who say well i smoke marijuana but it's not bad for me because it's natural that's the the voice of an ignoramus curare is also natural it can kill you i can name many many other toxicants that occur naturally in plants so when you say it's natural you don't know what you're talking about natural doesn't mean it's good what does natural mean it's natural. I smoke it because it's natural. As I said, there are a lot of poisons that are quite natural. 
Ricin, for example, the most toxic plant poison on earth, more toxic than anything man has ever created that I know of. Ricin, found in a little castor bean. Just one infinitesimal droplet of it can kill you. It's natural, isn't it? Very natural. How about the oleander plant? Remember when I first moved to Hawaii? I loved it because the plants were so beautiful, all those white flowers. And I was warned by locals, don't ever touch those plants. I said, why? Well, during World War II, when boys from the U.S. mainland were sent to Hawaii, they broke the stems off those plants. They didn't know what they were. They didn't know that the oleander was poisonous. And they roasted hot dogs with the stem, and they died. Because the white sap contained inside those stems is highly toxic. But they're natural, aren't they? Well, time is a running out, and it's naturally time for me to take a break. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. You're listening to Michael Savage. Coming up at 3, it's Mark Levin on Talk Radio 560 KSFO. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. You've heard me talk about the neck pain that Allison dealt with for over five years. Well, she said she tried everything. She told me that relief factor was the only thing that helped her. And again... It's why I'm suggesting you go to relieffactor.com if it's hard for you to take a long walk because of knee, back, or foot pain, or getting out of bed is even difficult. Getting out of a chair or sewing a needlepoint might be painful as well. Simply typing at your desk can be painful, and you're probably sick of it. I've already told you I've talked with the owners of Relief Factor. I know a great deal about the four ingredients in Relief Factor. I've studied and even written about the ingredients and how they can help lower your pain. They're anti-inflammatories, which is why if you're in pain, I think you should give this a shot. Give it a try. The Relief Factor three-week quick start is only nineteen ninety-five, And remember, nearly 80% of people who do order the quick start, they go back and order it again. What does that tell you? It must tell you something. So go to relieffactor.com, relieffactor.com, relieffactor.com. Give it a shot. Nothing to lose. 855-4728-2. Where's this guy who likes the marijuana stuff? Okay. Dave on KSFO line two. Go ahead, please. Hi, Dr. Savage. Uh, the cannabinoids in marijuana have been proven to help people relieve their pain and suffering from ADD, uh, all types of other medical uh, conditions. Well, sure. It, it slows your mind down sufficiently that you could stare at your navel or your toenail and think that you're looking at the universe. Like, uh, oh, gee, no, that's, a that's a beautiful toenail I have there. Wow. Let me run my finger through my toe and smell it. Mmm. That smells good. I'll bet the other toe would smell good, too. Sure, it helps you with ADD. You, you forget everything else. You're focusing on your toe and the limp between your toes. I have a very good memory, Dr. Savage. I'm a very intelligent, educated person. So, I but, ho, ho, ho. so which cannabinoid, which <laughs> cannabinoid are you... Hold it, sir. Which cannabinoid are you recommending? The cannabinoids uh, from the THC in the uh, marijuana plant. So you're arguing that it is the part that gets you high that you like, not the medical ones, but the ones that get you high. But No, I'm talking about how it's medically inclined to help people who suffer from... No, but you're going around the subject. A cannabinoid is not a reference to a single alkaloid. There are numerous alkaloids when you say cannabinoid, and I'm saying to you that there are medicinally active cannabinoids, but THC is not one of them. THC is the one that causes the psychoactive reactions meaning getting high. So you're getting high or you're treating a medical condition? No, they they uh, take the THC out of the chemistry part of the... Uh, that, that's what I just asked you. So you are taking uh, allegedly a, a, um, a form of marijuana that has no THC in it. Is that what you're saying? Right. It's just the CBD. All right, I understand that. That sounds like a miraculous solution to the problem. However, I have studied this. And I believe that even when you're getting other cannabinoids, there are residuals of the THC, so you're not getting any high from it at all? No, you don't get high from it. Good. All right. Well, good. well, you know what? Then you must have a medicinally accurate manufacturer there, because most of these guys are shysters working out of garages somewhere in Sonoma County or in Mendocino. Uh, you put your take your life in your hands, like pills made in India. 
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human, and she's got this little toy she's always playing with, all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese, and guess what? Egg rolls showed up like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. So, you know, I'm a dog, and I'm kind of new to this family, but I've noticed a trend. My humans do this thing where they go around and get all my toys and hide them in this basket, but it's always, but it's always the same basket. And it's always the same place. And then they act so surprised when I find them. But I'm like, hello? That's where you put it last time. Humans are the worst at hide-and-go-seek. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. <laughs> 